I mean, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for my chance to get into the Tyler, Tyler Perry. Man, I'd be such a good bad guy because he wouldn't yeah. make me a hero. I think we all. No, no, no. No, no. <laughs> uh, and I got bad news for you. I don't even think he would make you a bad guy in a film. I think he'd make you a bad one guy on like one of his his like sitcom bad. You know what I mean? Right. Like he he'd want to make you feel small in a way that uh, he would. He'd be like starring on the blacker the berry, the meaner the Jew. <laughs> <laughs> David Bory is the juice. <laughs> and angry, angry. And what do you really say? <laughs> David Bory is Blackberry. <laughs> <laughs> oh man coming Fuck. to maybe BET plus I don't know yeah, you wish <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the government growing babies my grow chips in your anus all koala bears are racist the ozone layer owes me money All right, new drink. One part Alize, one part Cristal. Thugs passion, y'all know what time it is. This drink is guaranteed to get the pussy wet and the dick hard. Welcome, little mamas and Gentiles alike, to another phenomenal episode of My Mama Told Me. <laughs> the podcast where we dive deep, deep into the pockets of black conspiracy theories. And we finally work to prove that Calvin Brodus, a.k.a. Snoop Dogg, is not in France as an ambassador to the Olympics, as we have all been led to b- believe, but he is, in fact, a Parisian spy. He's a reverse Josephine Baker. I'm oh, David Bory, y'all. Oh, boy, a reverse Josephine Baker. God damn, this is come terrifying. On, if come on, that's what's going to happen. That's nasty work if this whole time Snoop has been doing all these appearances just to make us feel completely thrown off, unaware, obtuse to the life that he's actually living as a foreign spy. I think it would work. I think if anybody, listen, if if Dennis Rodman can go to North Korea, come Snoop, on, Snoop can go to Paris. I don't even know how Dennis got there. You I don't know, know what I mean? he, like, I, <laughs> yeah, I think he's friends. With no, no, no. I know the logic of how Dennis got there. I'm saying that, like, physically, they have made us believe that getting <laughs> to North Korea is like this impossible thing, and the ins and outs. It's like you, you can't. We couldn't even figure it out on the black market type shit. And Dennis Rodman was going week to week, like he didn't give a fuck. He was just right? like, who? I take Delta to North Korea. Right, that's a good. That's a good point. That is a good point. Fucking six foot seven, drunk as hell. <laughs> I- <laughs> right, what did you? Because so many people had to have checked you at a border stopping at like you know what I mean to be like, what the fuck do you mean you're going to North Korea? And he's like, no, nah, I'm going to North Korea, and he did. Yeah, and do they stamp multiple your- times? Do they stamp your passport, North Korea? I think they take your passport. <laughs> 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 and they stamp you. Yo, <laughs> that's what like, they've led us to believe, at least. I don't know anything. Cause yeah, don't you have to, people have to like sneak through the mountains, right? That's what I mean. It's like so fucking crazy. Like, where did he land? Dog. <laughs> because what if you land in like Seoul, let's say you land in Seoul, they're not going to be cool, right? If you're just like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go up north real fast. I bet they're the least cool about it. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. don't know all the people, they're like, bro, that's not chill. <laughs> yeah, we don't, don't go over. So then that means he had to fly private from another country in. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, or somebody that like, yeah, he like had to go to Russia and then like you can go from right. Russia to North Korea or whatever the fuck. Damn. Damn. I don't. Yeah. This felt, that, that, that goes deeper than the Snoop Dogg thing. Yeah. No, I, but I think Snoop Dogg being a, an agent for a foreign, a foreign, you know, government seems possible too. It used to be famous people. Look it up. Used to yeah, it, and it makes sense. And he's the most famous person, I would say. 
and nobody's going to ask. He's one of the very few people that he could be anywhere and people would be like, oh, great, Snoop's here. Like, if I saw him in a government building, I'd be like, oh, awesome. That's Snoop's fucking the, cool. <laughs> yeah, Snoop's at the GA building or whatever. <laughs> wherever, <laughs> wherever I'm at, you know what I mean? <laughs> Damn, Snoop got weak? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> he always kept it real. Yeah. That's one thing I like about Snoop Dogg. He yeah. always kept it real. He loves Juicy Juice. Uh, <laughs> but what are we here to talk about? Not Snoop. In. We're not here to talk about Snoop. We are here. Uh, it's not a mini episode. This is this is a full Langston and David, David and Langston extravaganza. Yeah. <laughs> no Sharkeisha, just us two. And uh, we're going to read an email. We'll, we'll talk some shit and, and see what it does, what it yeah. does. It's going to be exciting. You want me to read it? You want to read it? Uh, yeah, I'll read it. Why not? Yeah, you can uh, read. Uh, so they say, uh, U.S. government, we got an a, a email from a person named Missy. Missy sent us an email that said, U.S. government intentionally stokes African versus African-American discord. Talk now, that, that hooks me right away. Here's where I f- lie. I understand it hooks me like I'm interested to read the email. I do think they've just been doing that. I don't need to, I don't know how much you need the government. <laughs> the government is intervention. That's just been <laughs> happening. <laughs> you're saying you're saying black people figured that out on our own. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't need like a white mastermind to come. No, as much as I I, I think that you take a group of people, I think you take a group of black people from one place. You take them to another place, they're going to be yeah. like, we are better than y'all. Regardless you're saying, of the black people. You're saying uh, the second them boats hit America, people look back and they're like, well, I hated them niggas. <laughs> 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 oh, I'm so glad I got to be away from them. <laughs> Africans. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna call them. They Africans. We different, y'all. <laughs> I think it was like I think it was like a situation like this. Sl- <laughs> this is terrible. Like the you remember that McDonald's commercial about Calvin? Yeah, Calvin got a job. Yeah, that's what yeah. they thought they were. They thought they were coming over <laughs> here to meet Calvin. <laughs> 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 As <laughs> soon as they unchain us, opportunity <laughs> awaits. <laughs> Have fun in the bushes, niggas. <laughs> <laughs> they just locking us up for safety. <laughs> when we get there, it's going to be tight, 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 tight. You see the ship says precious cargo. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, they sold me for uh, 40 shillings. I'm going to be fine. <laughs> <laughs> they say I got muscles. Uh, good teeth. Obviously, we know the middle passage <laughs> was terrible. We don't want this fucking email you're going to say. No, this is just fun, silly riffraff. We're just in making light of slavery. Yep. It's the only way you can uh, talk about slavery at this point is Yeah, what, are we going to make more dark of it? Come yeah, on. Yeah, what? What, are you going to remind me it happened and that it was worse than I could have ever imagined? No. Nah, you trying to watch 15 that. years of Slave? What are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> 10, 12 was too many, if you ask me. I didn't me. watch it. I didn't watch it. I, I did. Did you see it? It was, it was a beautiful film that Fuck I will you. never return to again. <laughs> no. <laughs> I will never pick. You know what I mean? It was just yeah. like, oh, all these talented people all doing the correct thing and telling this story. And I, I resent having seen it and I will never want to experience it once anymore in my life. Yeah, I get that. That's how I feel about all that, uh, BTP black tragedy porn. Yeah. I'm, I'm but it was beautifully active acted though. Come on, dude. She would tell edge of four at his, yeah. at his finest Lupita. Yeah. This is before we knew who Lupita was. Yeah. And she was, come on, Brad Pitt showed up. It was I didn't cool. even know that. Yeah, Michael Fassbender's up in there. Damn, you might be swinging me back. I might That's have what to I'm watch saying. <laughs> Michael Fassbender is like, you think he's going to be racist already. And then he's not. 
But man, did he lock in for for that piece? Do they have any fun slavery no. moments like Django did? <laughs> no. Yeah, I'm it's, out again. It's a nightmare film. I'm out again. I'm out again. I'm out again. I don't need that story told a, another time. To me. No, it's just a man trying to get back to his family the whole time. Ugh, nah, and then he man. gets back and they're old. No. Nah, you man. know what I mean? Like life has been lost. Bro, that's one thing I will say. Say whatever you want. You know what I love about the Tyler B- Perry verse? We're all rich and happy. <laughs> not happy, but everybody's rich. I was say, when are they we, happy? Are, we got all kinds of rich problems. It is. He does imagine a world where everybody is somehow as rich as he is. Even yeah, though he, man, we're he taking pays ski trips. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> he won't pay a single employee a living wage, and yet imagines the world where everybody is upper middle class black. Yeah. <laughs> Does he have his own streaming service now? I bet he does. I bet that there's. Makes sense. I though he. I think he owns BT Plus or something like that. But I bet you there's somewhere where like you can get just Tyler Perry Productions isolated from every other media service. That makes sense. Well, but if you do want to holler at us, you know what I mean. Honestly, yeah, holler at us. I'm what? What do you what do you call everybody who doesn't like his shit? I am one of the uh, smart. No, he, he he had some article. Olivia sent it to us where he was oh, explaining. Yeah. Where he uppity. said, that, "Yeah, he was like all you uppity Negroes who uh, don't care for my work. I am one of those uppity Negroes, but I'm not above changing my mind." Tyler Perry. Well, I mean, you wrote "Boo." You you're the reason it happened. So I mean, I, I was witness to it at the very least. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I it paid me back, Tyler, by just. Uh, Pouring me out in one of your worst projects. Come on, let me let me be a car dealership owner. That is how famous I want to get. Is to own a car dealership? Me too. No, that that's a nice kind of famous. Um, I want to get famous enough that I can go do something completely shitty, and everybody thinks it's funny that I would go do that. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I understand that. Like, I want to get so famous that I can go do a herpes commercial and everybody's (laughs) like, how funny is that, that he, like, very genuinely did that herpes commercial? See, I like that. I would like to get famous enough to have, like, my own yearly three-on-three basketball tournament. Oh, that's tight. That would be cool. That's tight. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like sponsor a little league team, which I guess we could probably do that now. I, I was about to say, I think you're famous enough for that now. And by famous enough, I mean making more than $40,000 a year. <laughs> Come on, baby. <laughs> that the government knows about. <laughs> on paper. <laughs> I think if you exceed any person on this planet who exceeds <laughs> forty grand, you could you could own a little league team tonight. That would be uh, crazy. Yeah. Could we, could you really do that, though? I think if you're willing to, like, buy some jerseys for a local Little League team, you know what I mean? Like, if Yeah, you, you could gear, probably write it all off, right? If you gear them out, they'll rename the team for you. I don't know about gear them out. I'm not trying to buy the cleats. That's on the parents. But <laughs> <laughs> but that's I'm just saying, if you want it to be the Bory team, you put cleats on them. Right. If you, if you want it to be a team that like recognizes David Bory in their like ye- monthly pamphlet, then you get them some jerseys and some Gatorades or whatever. Right. But like, I, if you really want them to be like, yo, our king is David Bory, you got to get them cleats. Okay. Damn. That's the problem. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not kicked up enough to buy cleats for an entire little league team yet. I think you. Because what's that like? What's that? Probably like 30 kids, 25 kids. Because you figure 11 aside, 22. Let's say you spend five grand on a little league team. I would do that. That's reasonable. I would do that. I think that's what we're talking about. Between jerseys, jerseys, cleats, maybe, you know, a couple uh, bats and helmets. Well, if you're listening and you have access to a little league team and you need (laughs) $5,000 tax deductible, I'm assuming. We'll work that out. We'll work that out at the back end. If yeah, it's come on, because I'm looking to hide some cash. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sound exciting to you to run a little league team. I don't want to run it. 
I was about to say, I I think at best I want to be like the uh, Donald Sterling of a little league team. <laughs> <laughs> I want to bring <laughs> nasty controversy to an like otherwise that. functioning organization. <laughs> yeah, I want to see. I want to be like Coach Prime and say bad things about their defense. Yeah, we prefer defensive players who don't have fathers. <laughs> yeah, it's like, why did you do that, man? This, yeah, I, th- these kids were gonna get recruited, whether you said that or not. It, that you didn't have to do that. He didn't have to tell anybody that, but you know, God no. put it on his heart, and God bless Coach Prime. God bless Boulder, Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say I, that about no Boulder kids. He was talking no, about he didn't say that. Man. I mean, I'll miss him when he eventually trades up to the team that he was always looking for. Yeah, I think you know, obviously, Colorado wasn't the dream for for old coach, but it uh, was. You know, he's got to turn it around though, and that's going to be good years, right? I I pray that he does because last year he started so hot. And it died but, so fast. But you got to remember that they only won a, a game the year before that. Right. So they were already. So it's already, he's already turned the program around. It was cash for gold. I got you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Damn. He just needs a few dogs, man. Yeah. He just needs yeah. a couple dogs. Listen, my team is, my team is CU Buffs on NCAA 25. Well, you were, you're a real, like, you're, you're trying to buy in early. I, it's not early. I would have bought in at Jackson State. Where it just, I'm just coming you. back around to football, though. I had a long time of not fucking with football. And I'm because of just your, having, your relationship with it? Because of what? No, nah, I just, like, when I started doing comedy, man, I, I kind of sports fell by the wayside. Like, I used to be very invested and knew where everybody went to college. And, like, mm. like I used to love Christmas break when I could watch all the bowl games and shit like that and watch pro and shit like that. And I just, like, just Your got brain other, shifted. Yeah, yeah, I just got other shit to do. I just didn't have that love for the game anymore. But in playing NCAA 25, I'm back, baby. Yeah, that's beautiful. Thank you, Coach Prime. And thank you, NCAA 25. Yep. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> We have an email. Missy, you sent us a very provocative topic. Uh, I'm curious. Let's read it. Let's just read it and we'll see what this does. Uh, They said, hey, Langston and David, I just started listening in the past couple months, but I'm loving the podcast and the dynamic between you two. I'm currently listening to the S Curl episode and Langston made a comment to to the effect that Africans in America are proud to be unlike African Americans and that there is a notion that Africans perceive themselves to be better than. And I stand by that, Missy. I won't back away. Uh, we know he does. Yeah, I, and I assume you're going to shame me for this uh, comment. You're going to rub my nose in it and tell me how I'm a victim of the white man's manipulation. And that might be possible, but that doesn't change how I feel. Missy goes on to say, my grandfather worked as an emissary for the Nigerian consulate. And my mom and her siblings lived all over the world before eventually settling in the U.S., As a child, I remember my mom telling me that when they first came to America, the family was shown a video by government officials that was full of stereotypes about black people in the U.S. And warned them, whoa, not to associate with African-Americans. Holy shit. Yo, this is this is truly crazy. God damn. Olivia, we got to get that video. Do some research. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> this leads me to believe that the government in the U.S. actively conspired to stoke tensions between African Amer- Americans and Africans. If I'm speculating on this on their intention, I'd argue their goal was to prevent us from coming together to form communities that uplift each other the way that other ethnicities seem to do when they immigrate to the United States. God damn. I'd love to hear your take on this. My appreciation, Missy. Wow, that is a great point in that you would think that any type of Black people coming to America and folding into the Black, a group of Black Americans would build community better, right? Bro, if if the African-American hang-up is that we don't know our history, we live amongst people who know our history. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like, I may not know my specific familial lineage, but my neighbors do know, like, 
so much about like what could where my people could be from and i'm opting not to engage with them because like we've been trained quote unquote trained not to like each other yeah that's just and it's like it does make sense to the fact of like clearly america has had has been trying to destroy the black community and that like that idea of like immigrant communities kind of forging within each other where it's like okay this is a Irish neighborhood and we have an Irish doctor and we have an Irish baker and an Irish butcher and all these things. And we kind of rely on each other to build out our community and thus our economic power is something that black people kind of have time and time again. Every time that happens, it's shut down, right? Yeah. I mean, you look at the fucking Godfather and how like when they think about a Italy and like their Italian lineage, they're kissing rings and like worshiping these people. They're not right. like these fucking not from here Italians. They're ruining it for all us good Italian American. Like there's no want to separate in that way. I mean, yeah, I think there's also though that's different because the nature of the triangle trade, I think whether perceived or not makes some resentment. That they 100%. don't have, I, right. I simply mean that, like, the literal understanding of of your home space is one that you think of warmly. And I don't right. even know that African Americans are trained to think of Africa with any warmth or I don't admiration. Think they do it all. I don't think that. I don't think that Americans. I don't think the West looks at no it in I that think, way. And when you you just have you ever just like I mean. I obviously, like, we joke about it on this podcast and stuff, but, like, the way people talk about Africa, they talk about it. People talk terribly. Bro, like, did people, you see... People hate it. People are afraid of it. Did you see the video that Tiffany Addish posted of her walking? She went to Zimbabwe and took, like, a full, like, five-minute video of her walking through a grocery store and being, like, blown away that they have grocery stores. Oh, it's bro, hard. yeah. I mean, it's hard being I, like vegetables. <laughs> yeah. Yo, I'm proud of us. I I'm thought y'all ate, <laughs> ate monkeys. No, I they mean, got tampons, y'all. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was a bad continent. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, the views on it are like crazy, crazy. Yeah. I mean, even just my mom immigrating here. I remember she told me when she first got here, like, in, you know, she got here in 87. People being like, when did you get clothes when you came to America? So nuts. Like, <laughs> truly. And this isn't, you know, this isn't the, this, this, this is the modern era. You yeah. know what I mean? And my mom not having, I talked to her about it too. It wasn't, at least we're from, we're from like deep in the country. So maybe yeah. that's a little different. But she didn't have any views of Americans when she got here. She knew like, you know, she knew about, the jet, like the music, but other than that, she had no notions. She had no. The only thing she had seen about America was someone in the Peace Corps had shown her uh, a video. I think, yeah, I think it was, <laughs> to no, avoid I think it was uh, yeah, 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 African yeah, yeah. Americans. <laughs> no, they showed they showed a horror movie. I think it was like Friday the Thirteenth wow. or uh, Chucky or some shit. So I asked her, I was like, "What do you think about America?" She was like, "I knew that school was good, but I also thought it was horrible because all." All she had seen was like Friday the Thirteenth, <laughs> just a giant white man. Yeah, she's like, "What the <laughs> In a fuck hockey is mask this?" Chasing you. That's how much Africans love education. Damn, that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, but no, this this is crazy. This is pretty wild. Here's what, and this makes me laugh. What if it wasn't an official video? What if it was just like their sponsor? <laughs> he was like, "I just made you a Welcome to America mixtape." Uh, <laughs> you like sit down, y'all. Here's a little something I've been working on. <laughs> He's like, the government did not ask me to do this. <laughs> it's not the final cut, but you'll get the gist. <laughs> We're still waiting on some editor's notes to get get uh, finished up, but you're gonna like what you see. But I mean, and to speak to conspiracies and, and things like that, though, that feels to me. Like the true kind of bad I feel like the government is capable of. Yeah, I, I do think there's so much incentive 
to keeping people isolated. I was watching this documentary that's on HBO about that. Fuck, what was it called? It was uh, about the guy who was fucking that white lady. Did you watch it? No, no, no. Oh, okay. You're talking about the the that was the Netflix documentary. I watched that too. The one with the the dude with cerebral palsy who I can't believe we haven't unpacked that on it. Maybe that's a different episode. You told but. me about it, and I didn't. Yeah. I hadn't heard about it, and then I've watched it since, and it's fucking nuts. And we should unpack that on a different day. It's oh, Synanon. There we go. There's this group Synanon from like the 70s or some shit. 60s, 70s, I can't remember the exact time that it starts, but it basically starts off as like this alcoholic drug addict program. It's like one of the first programs that can help get you off of I saw that. Like I saw drugs through group therapy. And then rigorous it ends honesty, up, right? The game. The game. And they're like yelling at each other and fucking like saying vile things to each other for the sake of healing each other uh, from their addictions. And then it evolves into a fucking cult. Like it fully yeah, cause he gets money. goes nuts how far it goes from just helping drug addicts stay clean. And it, yeah, I, it makes perfect sense that like a video and some manipulation could, you know. And oh, that's what what I was trying to say is that the major thing that they said for the people that stuck around in Synanon was they couldn't get rid of the community. Like they right. just couldn't unleash themselves because they felt so lonely and so isolated. And that's where cults sort of like find their strength. And so I think America having this cultish quality about it benefits from its citizens for specific reasons being completely isolated from each other. Yeah, I I I I agree with that completely. I think also just the way this shit's ha- set up, you have to have an underclass that you can do whatever you want to, right? Yeah. Just right. like that's you the need, set, that's you need you have to have that and it's economic to a point, but it's primarily racial, you know what I mean? Yeah, 10 of y'all have to starve for my belly to be full. And it's easier to break it down based off of color than it is to like go person to person and be like, what's your personality like? Right. That's a much more mm. difficult. That's a much more difficult. Situation. No, you're a good guy. We'll let you eat. Yeah, you're in with <laughs> He's one of the good ones, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, they're all dirty, rotten, barefoot. <laughs> all right. <laughs> You're taking liberties here. <laughs> Big old wide noses, you know. <laughs> uh, but so I to speak to this, how do how do you feel about this? Because it truly, however you feel about it, it you have to acknowledge that it is a complicated relationship. And I think both sides seem, at least I can say in my life from what I've seen, both sides seem to want to take the good from each other and not the bad. Does that make sense? Oh, that like we both would love, we would love to borrow Africa as the motherland and all the motherland and like that guy beautification, yeah, and stuff and like oh yeah, we were kings and we used to we we don't want to deal with like your actual like politics and and personhoods and shit. And yeah, and I mean and vice versa, right? With like with like with like from the African side, you know, Africans love rap music. You right. you know what I mean? They love the fashion. They want to like all these all these positive things that everybody takes from black Americans. I think that there is a level of of wanting that without maybe the direct problems. And I think that is that's an odd it's an odd way to look at it because if you look it feels like we're both in bondage. You know what I mean? So to not meet in the middle on that is very strange. I, yeah, we're both being like, I'm not like, I'm not like that. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not yeah, like that yeah. one. And we're both, we would benefit from being like, let's, let's mix this up a little bit. I mean, I would, because the, the, uh, the similarities are shocking. I don't know though. Cause you felt, you said you didn't feel like that when you went to Africa. Um, right? Um, uh, no, I, I, I felt, I think South Africa is a slightly more complicated, and maybe it's not, maybe I'm being ignorant when I say this, but it felt more complicated because it is pitched so much as this place of transformation 
that like right. black the black community, the colored community out there sort of like found their their equality past apartheid. And then you get there and you realize, oh, apartheid's still happening. They just don't have laws for it anymore. Right. Like, right. Every single server is a black person. And every single person being served is a white person or a black person on, you know, doing some tourism shit. And it's that like, is, oh, there's that's no complicated. That does feel that would that would I, I I never really thought about that way. But now I think about it, that w- would really change. The way I experienced Africa. Bro, we asked because we were really trying to experience South Africa. You know what I mean? And like we're in Cape Town. We like hit up a, a few of the people in the hotel, like staff and like in various places. We knew behind the desk they're going to give us some generic whatever. But like we pulled like a fucking like valet dude aside and we're like, bro, wh- where can we go eat where we can really try all food where we can really right. like have the full experience? He was like, man, go to Mama Africa. Mama Africa, that's where you got to be. Mama Africa, you're going to love it. Please go there. That's where everybody needs to go if they want to try and experience our shit. We went there. I promise you, I am not exaggerating when I tell you it is the Rainforest Cafe in Africa. Do you know what I mean? Like it is African Rainforest Cafe. I think you think that pitch sounds a lot worse than it does. I'm saying that, like, <laughs> nah, nah, I, agree, I, I begged you for authenticity. Yeah. And he this is where you, you sent me because you know, well, it's not even that he doesn't believe me. It's that, you know, if you really, if I wanted the experience, I would have to go to a shanty. Like, I would have to be amongst the people where I'm not even safe to be. So, because this is, they're in townships and shit. Like, right, I would have right. to travel outside of where people who look like me even exist and then I'm in danger. So they're like, nah, man, just go to Mama Africa. That's if that's what you want. But like, we don't have, it's not available to you because that's how far the fucking gap is between wealth and any version of existence out there is. That's fair. That's fair. That, yeah, that would not, cause I never been to South Africa. It seems like that would be, Difficult, but then I also think about even my experience with Africa, and so much of it is familial that it's like, I don't know if I would like go to Sierra Leone with you and be like, let's go to Kalbata. Like, I I don't know if that would even. You could come to the village, but that's like way out. You know what I mean? But like, so that that I guess that does inform it. Do you did you did you have any sense any time during the trip? Did you feel any sense of like camaraderie or like? Or was it? Because doesn't you have family in Ghana too, right? Yeah, but it, my mom's not from there. She just is an expat who moved no, but there. like she, but she seems to have been able. Has she found like community there and been able to like integrate somewhat? Yeah, I mean, my mom lives pretty like uh, sub rural. You know what I mean? Like it ain't fully rural, but it's it's close to it kind of vibe. She's and- not like in Accra or anything. She's like, I, I think she said she's like an hour outside of Accra. You know what okay, I mean? Okay. Like, so it's, 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 she's got to travel to get there or like a half hour to an hour outside of it. So it's like maybe a, an equivalent of a suburban, but it's less developed than what we understand suburbs to be. Right. And so I think, nah, like she's definitely built a lot of community there. But I do think even in talking to her, there still remains a type of otherness that she holds in her head about like what what are the fundamental differences between an African person and an African American person. And I, I don't she's never gonna leave, but she's also like, Yeah, but I'm not like them. Uh, there's right. a difference. That's interesting. I mean, you know, that Americanness is huge, right? That is a huge hump to overcome like black white whatever if you're american you're american and that is like a that that is like a very different thing than everywhere else as far as i've seen yeah and i i I think maybe if i'm if i'm going to be empathetic in this part of the conversation it's it's happening now and it looks like you're having a difficult time with i don't care for it but i I think the breakdown 
I think maybe there's a level of empathy I can hold for what has always felt like an attack on, in my opinion, from African people in that they're sort of like not, want not to be like us. But maybe some of that is the projection that we're always putting out of like the Americanness, this sort of like we are our own thing and nobody else is a part of it. It's hard to enter a space and not feel othered in that way if that's what people are putting out so i could respect them being like well shit i don't want you to you know fire back at me because i try to mix in too much fuck y'all we're doing our own thing and it is odd because you think about like just like even within america the communities a lot of times are very like some people integrate some people don't like like i have there's a barber in my shop who's from the drc right but he's like fully uh, you would you wouldn't I mean, I guess you could tell by looking at him, but his mannerisms, no, you wouldn't, anything about him, you wouldn't think that. Hey, right. But then, hey, that's your well, man from the Congo. That is my man from the Congo. <laughs> that's hilarious. I didn't even think about that. But then I think about like my sisters who came here later and yeah. they're, they, yeah, okay, they live in California, but they live in African ass existence. Like, yeah, they might pop out and go to a Mike Epps show or some shit. Right. In like the greater black community, but they go to African parties, they go yeah. to African dances, they go to African wet. Like they're not really, they're not, they're not s- super integrated in that way that I only am because I was like born and raised here. I met a I met a dude on set for something who introduced himself. He was like, "Yo, you're a comedian." I'm like, "Yeah." You know, he was like, "Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Me too." But I I strictly work like the African market i was like okay yeah and uh, he was like yeah i'm I'm strictly on the african side and i looked him up and this nigga's killing (laughs) you know what i mean like i believe it i think he's like cooking over there but but i just think you got to be doing african shit and there's an entire market of people who are like no we don't want to i don't want to learn about what this is i want to hear me back to me yeah they want they want basket mouth that's crazy that's his name. I didn't, uh, I didn't know. I, I thought right. maybe that was a phrase I was unaware of. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just a big I Nigerian. Didn't, I didn't want to be bigoted and be like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds African as so. <laughs> hell. He's like, no, nah, that's actually a Sierra Leone tradition. <laughs> it refers to that. Like, no, no, no. I'm just going to sit this. We don't out. even, I don't know any Sierra Leonean comedians. There were these guys, one, one Pot Soldiers, but they just like, it was like musical comedy. Uh, and they had a big hit song called Junk's Clothes. I don't, we don't really need to get into it. African, African humor also, at least in Sierra Leone, is very similar to British, where it's almost too silly for me. Mm. You know what I mean? Where like, yeah, I get what you mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, right. There's a lot of whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> okay. I don't like it when you do it. <laughs> I don't like it when you make it sound like that. <laughs> I, I, that was meant to be the slipping on a banana sound. That wasn't oh, meant to be I thought it was uh, like, African sounds. Damn, okay. we gotta we gotta learn to love each other if we're We really it. gotta get it together. I think this is this is the common ground. But I also think that I'm a lot more American than I'd probably even then like if you even see my like my cousins and stuff, you'd be like, what happened? I don't think of you as a traditionally African guy. I think of you as a very Americanized guy who right. uh, is African. Right, right, right. I mean, I'd still want like a Volvo and stuff, so it's in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think we need to take a break. I'm almost certain of it. If when we, we come was. back, we're going to keep talking more about uh, about this this supposed beef started by the American government between the Africans and the, the black people of the USA. We'll be back with uh, with more David, more Langston, more My Mama Told Me. I can go anywhere. Suck my dick. There it we is. We are <laughs> back. <laughs> That's one of the original drops, baby. 
I forgot how funny that one was. That was so good. <laughs> it really got me. Uh, we're talking about Africans, Americans, Africans, Americans. Uh, I, <laughs> I just, I, cause I also think about this. Sometimes I feel like this is sounding weird. Not weird. I feel like African Americans get a really huge chunk of the conversation of what is the the black diaspora. Does that make sense? Oh. Like even internationally, the Americans take up a lot of space. Not in a good or a bad way, but just like that does kind of feel because it's like because Africans, at least in my experience, they gatekeep the blackness the same way that American black people do. Like very much like I, I, people in my family think you're not black if you weren't born in Africa, mm. like straight up. Yeah. I think to your and they point, even want to leave, but they're like, no, I'm an African. I can't deny my lineage by like leaving this, this property. No, they would leave. That's the thing about Africa. People it fucked up over there. Everybody would leave if they could, but they just don't, they don't really, you're black if you're from Africa and everybody else is not. I feel like I've told this story on the podcast before, but I had uh, I had some step cousins that lived in Cabrini Green, which was the housing projects in Chicago. Yeah. And I remember one year us going over there for like Thanksgiving or some shit. And uh, you know, I'm I'm at their their fucking tiny ass like project apartment, whatever. We're hanging out. There's nothing to do, and then we get a knock on the door. And they open up the door and they have me come to the door and they go, hey, y'all, see, we told you we got a white cousin. Ha! Damn. And they they make me stand there. (laughs) But they go, I told you he white. Look, he white. I told y'all we got a white cousin. Look at him. And I'm standing in the door while people in the hallway like, yeah, yeah. They're not even like, like, whoa, fuck yeah. What's up, man? Good to meet you. They're like, oh, yeah, like a zoo animal. That is a complicated story. <laughs> God damn it, bro! I, people always did, ask what, me what happened. What, what happened right after that? I told on them, and I would listen to them get beat. <laughs> Are you serious? God damn it, guys! If you're I watching told this- their dad, <laughs> and I listened outside the door while he. Beat them incessantly. <laughs> I know that a lot of you are watching this on YouTube. Run that back. If you want to see a villain <laughs> origin story, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Everything that just happened is crazy. It, it, dog, it was a crazy day for me. <laughs> that was a rough Thanksgiving, my man. Yo, because that's it's also your family. That hurts where it's like, but it's now not, you're other. That's what and, makes it even crazier is like, these ain't even my real people. These are my uh, step people. So I didn't want to be around y'all in the first place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was probably I wasn't even comfortable calling y'all my cousins. Damn. And now y'all are making me this white cousin that I like, I don't even like y'all like that. That is, that is, I don't think I'm even qualified to talk to you about the full implications of uh, that. And look how much crazier, if you really want to unpack this shit, look, I'm also from the suburbs. So like you brought me to the projects, which I ain't, I don't be over here like that. Y'all ain't my people like that. I am othered in every sense of the word. And then you put me in the hallway to show me off like a zoo animal. The hallway is nasty. The come hallway, on. They, they, didn't, they didn't even have them come inside. <laughs> I'm wearing a Thanksgiving sweater, bro. <laughs> no, you <laughs> I had on a green turtleneck. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! I looked like an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! I had this curly head. Yo, I, I know I'm it was boy. curling. I know. I was, it was like probably eight. A, probably a long ass eyelashes. Come on, man! I didn't have no beard. I ain't have uh, no. You know what I mean? There you was had just no nothing. armor on. You couldn't hoop that good yet. Come on! There was, there was nothing no. You had to no it. armor. 
you had nothing to protect yourself. I w- there wasn't a video game nearby I could reach for and be like, but I'll kill you on, on these sticks. Yeah, there was yeah. nothing. I had nothing. Yeah, you needed I a weapon. I was so alone. And these motherfuckers made me a zoo animal? Yeah, I'm going to listen to them get their ass whooped. God damn it. That's a hard story to hear. Bro, people ask me how I got into comedy. <laughs> that Come day. On, man. Must have I, been that day. Bro, I've had, you can't. <laughs> I've had to live through it, man. Yeah, you can't. <laughs> and I'm not saying that you could have a good life and not be a comedian, <laughs> but you do have to take L's like that. You got to take L's. It, like, it does inform your whole view of the world. Yes. Because, yeah, I've taken mine. None that I would love to publicly state like you did i respect your willingness <laughs> to trust these animals who listen to our podcast uh, but yeah it's the reason i struggle to trust a jerry seinfeld as a comedian is because right. of like bro when where's your version of that story right because you come from money you don't really have to be doing this i get that there's sort of like a lineage of like jewish sort of identity built around comedy so maybe that's where you sort of found your connection but the drive to keep doing this shit at 70 years old if there's not an origin story here man some of this shit just feels like word math and that's I don't give a fuck. I, that's how I feel about it. There's no heart to it. Damn. I'm try- sorry. I'm trying to move forward from that. That's story. okay. That's, this is so heavy. Nah, it was, it was a hard day for me, big dog. I believe I'll say it. this. One of the more cynical things that I've ever experienced as it relates to Africa and conversations around Africa was with you. This was at your house in, in Denver, your your gorgeous apartment, loft, dare I say? Yeah, it uh, is a loft. I'm leaving it, but yeah, it's a loft. Oh, fuck. All right, yeah, Pete, it's a loft. Yeah, me and my girl get in the spot. Anyways. <laughs> was when we were sitting on your couch and we watched that YouTube video of that white man traveling to like quote unquote remote Africa yeah. and handing out Sour Patch Kids. He was like hand making fucking people eat Sour Patch Kids out of his raw palm. Yeah. Just pouring it into his own palm and then they'd eat a Sour Patch Kid and he was just filming it to see Africans react to trying candy for the first time. Yeah, that was brutal. That was dark. That was brutal. I'd be I'd be hate watching some shit, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was brutal. Uh, fuck, that was so bad. I forgot about that. <laughs> I'll never forget that because <laughs> because not only was it fucking sick and insane that he wanted to do that in the first place, but the Africans weren't even having that intense of a reaction to the shit because right. it was just like it's. We're not. It's not that crazy. There's still we're not people. Animals. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's just people. You're not giving a baby a lemon. I know yeah. what it. I can see the little crystals on it. What's it gonna yeah. be? Sour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. As also, you're weirder for eating that all the time than they are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like if we're talking about in the grand scheme of things. <laughs> if anything, what you're doing is like introducing a drug. Yeah. Like you're you're just handing out drugs to people. This isn't like a, an insane like you're blowing their mind. You're just poisoning them. I mean, come on, you see what sugar's doing in Mexico? <laughs> that's not the same thing actually. <laughs> I don't think that's fair. That was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Press a button or something free oh, yourself yeah, from yeah, the I'm quiet sorry. that that you created. <laughs> Uh, so <laughs> all that being said, man, we've really covered a lot of ground this episode. I yeah. don't even know if we did good or bad. I, I think I it was a good conversation either. to have. Yeah. I think this I, stuff is good to talk about. With before we start mind. wrapping it up, I do want to try to find this video to see. I if don't maybe think they, there's... I don't think they're going to let that out. That's crazy, bro. Cause that's ultimately the conspiracy theory of it all. That's the craziest shit. The idea that the government has a video telling foreign black people to be afraid of American blacks. That to me is crazy because it also speaks to like, that's what they're telling via media in all things and maybe even ourselves 
to a degree, that's what everybody's telling the world about American black people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I mean, it's such a fascinating thing to somehow create hierarchies for the lowest tier of people. Do you know what I mean? That like, even when you are the lowest, lowest, lowest fucking person in the world, you still have to, to be able to keep existing in some ways. You ha- still have to have somebody who you think you're better than. Yeah, I mean, but that's how they they have to do it, right? It's the magic you, of it, frankly. Yeah, then you're it's complacent, like, right? Like, I mean, I think that's the story of poor white people. Right. At least we're not them. They're taking our job. You know what right, I mean? Right, right. Yeah. We were okay if it weren't for y'all, you know? Yeah, this would all be a different experience had you not been here or had you not done what you did, blah, 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 blah. Right. Yeah, no, it's 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 a fascinating magic, I think, that white people figured out very early and to their to their credit, they do it well. They fucking nail it every time of figuring out a way to make people distrust and hate each other. But all that being said, I believe in that video. I believe, I believe that video. I don't exists. think we're going to be able to find it, but I yeah, true, I a hundred percent believe that video exists. I looked it up, and um, and all I'm seeing, at least at the beginning of this search, and I'll I'll spend a few hours on this after we log <laughs> off. But there's a lot, a lot of content of pe- people asking, "Do black people and Africans hate each other?" And why do black people and Africans hate each other, but not a lot of information of like white, the government taught us to do this. And I don't think they do. I think that like it's systemic, in, but I think at the core, I don't feel that way because I don't feel like we're inherently hateful. I either group, mm. you know what I mean? I, I, I do think if anything, it's more put upon in systemic, but I don't, I don't, I don't think that like, I don't know, man. When I think of Africa, I do think of like love and really resilient people who are open to life and other people despite what the world has shown them. Yeah, I think that's fair to say. I I even to to tack on to that, I would say so much of it is maybe less about like even needing to teach us to hate, because if that if what you're saying is true, and I think I believe what you're saying, then our our want, our willingness to hate is not at the forefront of who we are. But what they can do and the smart strategies that they employ is to just keep our information separate, right? Like right. how many African books do you read in the average American classroom. And even if you are reading an African book, how much of it is something that you had to like seek out on your own? You know what I mean? Or it's probably like things fall apart, which I bet you taught. I didn't teach it. I, uh, I did read it and took an African studies class in college where I, I read that, but I wouldn't have read it. I think had I just been taking general English classes, maybe somewhere along the line, you read that, but like, that's their only African book. That's what I mean is that's like the the one. And that story is sort of like such a sad African story. It's a very like uh, affirming African story if you already have negative stereotypes exactly. of this place. And I like Okonkwo, but that's... Yeah, I think it's a great piece. It's just not... It ain't fixing my brain about what this place is. Right, 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 right. So, you know, you want to fix your brain, just go watch some Nigerian movies. A lot of a lot of good magic in those. Stay off of YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> there Don't. is a man handing out sour patch kids, and it'll make you feel fucking. Whew. I don't know how I thought we were just gonna go wa- do a comedy show after that. That that shit gave me a chill <laughs> up my spine. Sometimes it, you see true evil, and it does do that. Sometimes you, a few times in my life, I've been. Unlucky enough to witness what I think was true evil, and that's yeah. that's the feeling you get out of it. It really did feel like true evil, and the dude wasn't even like young enough that I could like chop it, chop it up to be like, oh, he's just a young dude figuring himself out, and he took a big swing. This was like a fifty year old man yeah. handing out a candy he don't eat yeah. to to adults, 
and expecting them to have like silly sour face reactions. Oof. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it was it was ugly shit. But hey, we're here now and and prayers up for those uh Come on. almost certainly uh dead Africans. <laughs> yeah. Jesus and look at you, you made it out the hallway. <laughs> I made it out the hallway, baby. You got a house, you got a family? I got a house. Them kids got beaten. So everybody's okay. Yeah, that story that, that, <laughs> that story is a loss for everyone involved. <laughs> There's so much I can tell you about that family that if I told you now would uh would almost certainly fall back on me and, and I I I don't want that. That I'd be, rather you didn't. I'd rather yeah. I mean off air, of course. Off air I'll tell you yeah, a lot okay. more about how fucked up that family was, but man, tough day. Tough day. The turtleneck uh, is what really puts it into perspective. <laughs> I don't know why that's just like the most vivid because then it just all comes together. Yeah. It, it's a real, uh, okay. I see how they yeah. got where they were getting. I see how mm-hmm. you, uh, mm-hmm. feel so alone. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This all yeah makes never sense. had a chance. That's the thing about comedians. We all feel very lonely no matter what. It's a problem. Mm-hmm. Anyways, we let, we but let's not ever talk about comedy on here. <laughs> it's kind of my favorite part about this podcast. <laughs> yeah, we just uh, avoid about avoid the thing that makes us sick. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 My poison. I guess we did it. Yeah, we did it. I think All we right. did it. Thank you, Missy, for for what I hope was uh, I, I hope w- was a helpful conversation or at least an affirming conversation. It seems like we very much believe that even if it isn't the government actively trying to make us hate each other. Although it sounds like this videotape probably does exist. There is a ton of benefit to keeping us separated and angry at each other, or at the very least suspicious of each other. And we, we hope to change that. Although I'm 37 years old, Davis 37 years old. We're pretty set in our ways. Uh, good luck. Yeah. You know, anything could happen. Good luck, booty scratchers. <laughs> All right. Yo, we almost got out. We almost got out of here. You piece of shit. <laughs> Fucking God damn it. That, and that's where it comes from. That's, that's, you see this laugh? That's the guy who listened to him get, get beat. That's the child who delighted. <laughs> Oh, God uh, damn it. <laughs> you want to tell the people where they can find you? <laughs> uh, uh, cool Guy Jokes 87 is my Instagram. I have a special that is out now. This $12 is worth it. Uh, it's worth pa- it. Yeah, it's worth it. Go to patreon.com backslash David Bory, G B O R I E, and buy that special. I got on there, I got like 30 some videos of interviews behind the scenes stuff we got an interview with langston it's real great it's a good time hours and hours of content all for 12 little dollars go and uh yeah go go do that fuck yeah that's oh in august 23rd and 24th i'm gonna be at the dallas comedy house in dallas i love that club last time so many little mamas came out for me so i'm excited to go back yeah, hell yeah. Go go see Bory in Dallas. Go watch the special. It's great. And as always, you can follow me at Langston Kerman. You can watch my special August 20th on Netflix. It's called Bad Poetry. It's available. Oh, God, it's so good. Mmm. Mmm, <laughs> so good. Mmm, so good and tasty. Mmm. Mmm. That's, that's exactly what I needed right there. And uh, if you want to send us your own drops, your own conspiracy theories, if you want to prove to us that that video does exist and if we watch it, we'll die in seven days like the, the niggas we didn't see in the ring, send it all to mymamapod at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. The like, subscribe, yeah. uh, review, rate, uh, Zimbabwe. Do it all. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Bye, bitch. Someone get this jigaboo away from me. 
My Mama Told Me is a production of Will Ferrell's Big Money Players Network and iHeart Podcast. Created and hosted by Langston Kern. Co-hosted by David Borey. Executive produced by Will Ferrell, Hans Sani, and Olivia Aguilar. Co-produced by Bay Wayne. Edited and engineered by Justin Conn. Music by Nick Chambers. Artwork by Dogon Krieger. You can now watch episodes of My Mama Told Me on YouTube. Follow at My Mama Told Me and subscribe to our channel.